What's up guys, Asian here with not quite a PTS video, but this is a video on a couple of changes that are going to be upcoming. I shouldn't say changes necessarily, but tests that are going to be upcoming in order to try out a couple of changes, which the devs think are going to help alleviate some of the lag issues in Cyrodiil. So I'm just going to start reading from this post, and as we're reading through, I'll give you my thoughts. And generally speaking, I don't really want to paint in broad strokes here, but the thoughts of some other people that I have discussed these changes with. I shouldn't say people, groups of people, uh, discords where I've discussed these changes with. So this post is on the official forums and I will have a link to this in the description below for those of you guys who have forum accounts who want to give feedback uh, on the proposed tests. So this is from Rich Lambert who is the creative director of Betamax Online Studios. As part of our ongoing performance optimizations, we have been spending a lot of time analyzing and addressing problems in Cyrodiil. I'm going to give a summary of what has happened over the years, what we've been doing to alleviate the problems, and our future plans. When talking about ESO server performance, it is important to understand that all abilities in the game, with some exceptions, have a, quote, soft limit on the number of times they can be executed. An example of a, quote, hard limit on an ability is an ability that is, can be executed one time every two seconds, enforced by the server. ESO doesn't have many of those. Instead, we designed the game to have soft limits, which means you can execute as many abilities as you want as long as you have the resources, magic or stamina, to cast them. There is a global cooldown timer on all abilities, which is set to 1000 milliseconds or 1 second. The design goal of soft limits in any game is to allow players to create builds that let them execute abilities more often depending on build choices made, and not to have hard ceilings on damage or healing per second. This gives a lot of control to the player, which makes for a really fun and interesting system, but it can lead to situations where players cast too many abilities too quickly and continuously if strict limits on resources are not enforced. In this paragraph, uh, there, I mean, obviously I'm not a game designer. I did not go to school for game design. Um, I have not designed any games myself. I'm not an indie dev or anything like that. Um, but I do agree a little bit here with the fundamentals of what he's saying. When you're imposing soft limits, you're basically giving players a little bit more flexibility when it comes to builds and you're potentially opening up um, uh, builds that might be sacrificing one thing for another and so on. And it is true that if you have soft limits, you tend to have softer ceilings on damage and healing done per second. Uh, so a good example of, you know, all of these, quote, soft limits and hard limits, for example, uh, would be something like, uh, since I've been playing the game a lot, Mage Hunter World, where elemental damage has a hard cap and you can only surpass it through certain uh, armor set bonuses. Um, so if you don't have those armor set bonuses, you have that hard cap, so there is a ceiling to how much elemental damage you can deal without those uh, armor sets there. Um, so I do agree with the fundamental design goals that he is describing here with soft versus hard limits. Over the years, player power has grown considerably. We're on the fourth paragraph now. With the addition of the champion system, various armor and weapon sets, and changes to abilities, we have reached a stage where players with the right build can cast near infinite numbers of abilities. If you add in a properly managed group with some focused on damage and some focused on healing and regen boosts, we have a perpetually running, never-ending stream of abilities. Now, this is fundamentally true, both in PvE and in PvP, although just maybe because I'm bad at PvP, I find it a little bit harder to stay in PvP compared to PvE, but you can do it for but as somebody who has played PvE a lot, yes, in a properly organized group, DPS basically have what feels like infinite resources with the appropriate build. Um, obviously, for more beginner groups and progression groups, that might not necessarily be the case. Uh, but in an organized group, it is possible to get your sustain and drain to the point where you're near parity, and so it you basically essentially have infinite resources. With that in mind, consider how area of effect or AoE abilities work. When cast, they uh, each they look at a specific target area, almost always the area directly around the caster, find targets and perform the ability. Each of those steps requires server calculations, and this is obviously true. At launch, Cyrodiil's processes were able to keep up with the number of AoEs cast because most players couldn't cast that many of them. They ran out of magic or stamina, so they had to use AoEs judiciously. Over time, as player knowledge grew and regen builds grew in power, more players could cast more and more AoEs before running out of resources. Now, I played ESO at launch, and 
I can say that the game has changed a lot. And to be honest, I don't really remember much about how the abilities worked back in 2015, 2016, when Cyrodiil first, uh, when ESO first launched. Um, actually, no, I think it was 2014. Uh, when ESO first launched, uh, when I first started playing ESO. Um, I was a beta tester as well, um, and, I, and I didn't really play PvP back then either. I was more focused in on the PvP side of things, more, more questing than anything else. Um, but I do remember that the game was very different. The overall resource numbers were lower, and we didn't have things like weapon abilities. So something like um, Blockade Developments, for example, I don't think that was around back when the game first launched. Um, I, uh, or if it, or if there were weapon abilities, Block Aid was not among them. Just, just sort of remembering off the top of my head. Uh, for so, for example, one of the big abilities, AOE abilities, back uh, not necessarily at launch, but pre One Tamriel, uh, was Deep Breath or Draw Essence from on a DK. It basically was an insanely powerful move there. Um, so again, I don't really remember enough. I, did, well, I, I am a beta player and I did play at launch, but I didn't play in Cyrodiil and I wasn't as hardcore of a player as uh, back then than I was, you know, towards the end of my ESO career. Um, so I can't confidently say that this statement that he says is correct. But I do know that the second, the, the second sentence there uh, concerning uh, how uh, you can cast more AoEs as player knowledge grew and regen builds grew in power, I would say that is partially true. Um, yes, regen builds did grow in power, and I'm thinking back in Homestead, the Homestead patch, you basically had infinite sustain, essentially, both in Cyrodiil and PvP, as well as in PvE. Um, and that was due in part to the champion point system, which they rectified in Morrowind by getting rid of the cost reduction. Uh, they continued to basically nerf regen uh, sustain in various ways. They also buffed it by introducing new sets, um, and like Holofang, for example. Um, but yes, you could cast more, not necessarily more AoEs, but you could cast more abilities before you ran out of resources. Um, it was not, wasn't necessarily the case going from Homestead to Morrowind and for a few patches after Morrowind, um, but you certainly could, uh, especially uh, in later patches, I'm thinking elsewhere and uh, patches past elsewhere. Uh, yes, you basically could cast basically many more abilities than you could back in Morrowind. During these years, we found and fixed many performance issues in Cyrodiil, and we continue to do so. We fixed significant issues, uncovered more, and continue to find and fix with every update. I will not comment on this because obviously there's a lot of issues um, that they have fixed and they have not fixed. So there is truth to the fact that they have fixed many performance issues, but obviously they can't hit everything. And with a game as big as ESO, there's always the possibility that fixing an issue might actually be introducing issues uh, either downstream or upstream of the actual code itself. However, one fundamental issue remains. At some point, we crossed the threshold where most players in PvP were able to cast endless AoE abilities without ever running out of resources. This is done through player knowledge, builds, and group mechanics, resulting in a constant stream of AoEs with many players never using any other type of ability. Uh, now, this, this statement, from what I gather, it depends on the specific build that you're running. Yes, AoE skills are potentially powerful in PvP, especially in um, Cyrodiil, specifically. So it is not entirely inaccurate to state this, uh, to make this statement from what I've gathered from players who play mainly PvP. Uh, but a lot of them also said that it does depend on play style um, and things like that, who you're going up against. Um, so th there is some truth behind the statement that they're saying here, where uh, most players in PvP are able to cast endless AoE abilities. Now, somebody also raised the potential um, that they're counting jabs which Stamplars and Madplars use quite frequently in Cyrodiil as AoE abilities. And AoE abilities also count things like healing. So things like healing orbs, for example, healing springs, those might also fall under the umbrella of AoE abilities that they are referring to here. So not necessarily a dishonest statement, but one that does have some nuances that we have to consider. This is not what we intended, but part of the fun of Elder Scrolls games is designing a build that has unexpected and powerful results, and we allowed it. 
However, as this behavior grew more prevalent, we reached a point where casting so many continuous AoE abilities in such a small area started to overwhelm the server process for that area, leading to situations where the lag meter spikes and a server becomes unresponsive for a period of time. Our initial response to this problem started with update 22, so this would be 5 updates ago, so this would be, if I am remembering correctly, this should be Dragonhold, but I might be misremembering. Um, was to find and fix more than a few problems with AOE ability calculations and make them more performant, and we stayed mostly ahead of the problem. Debatable in PvE, but moving on. But as more players reached maximum champion level and more players started utilizing this particular method of quote AOE spamming, we have reached a point where we cannot fix these issues around the edges. We need to address the core problem, which we will be starting with update 27. To do this, we will need to first do some analyses, and we can only do this on the live servers. As much as we try to avoid running tests on live servers, they are the only place where the combination of player behavior, specific builds, and mass battles happen. So starting the week of August 24th, we will be running a series of tests on the live PC servers, both NA and EU, only in Cyrodiil. Please note that we will not be running these tests on any console servers. Each test should take about a week, but if needed, we will extend the testing time. The first round of tests we are planning will focus on AoE abilities in Cyrodiil and will make it more difficult for AoE abilities to be the only builders used, adjusting cooldown, cost, and region values of all AoEs, damage, and healing. Specific details on the tests we will be running in Cyrodiil are as follows. Test 1, Shared Global AoE Cooldown, a 3 second timer. This test adds a global 3 second shared cooldown to any AoE ability. This means that when you cast an AoE, you will not be able to cast another for 3 seconds. Test 2, Individual AoE Cooldown, again with a 3 second timer. This test adds an individual AoE cooldown to each AoE ability. That means when you cast an AoE, you'll not be able to cast that same AoE ability for 3 seconds. Test 3, No Cooldown, Global Ramping AoE Cost. This test adds a global ramping AoE cost for each AoE cast, similar to how Streak or Dodge Roll works, where when you cast an AoE, you receive a debuff for 5 seconds. Each stack of the debuff increases the cost of any AoE cast. Test 4, individual AoE cooldown with a 3 second timer on top of a global ramping AoE cost. So this adds an individual AoE cooldown to each ability as in test 2, but also combines that with the ramping global cost, a global ramping cost from test 3. During the test that any during the time that any of these tests are active, we will be rewarding double alliance points for anyone active in Cyrodiil. As we complete the above tests, we may try other combinations of cooldown costs and region values on AoE abilities. However, we need to run these tests first and then assess the data. We will then let everyone know what we found and how we will move forward. We will be very upfront, but please be aware that if these tests confirm our hypotheses, then chain casting AoE abilities will no longer form the core of the ESO PvP experience in the way that it has for the last few years. We will then go through each class and ensure that there are viable builds for each and make adjustments as necessary. The code for these changes will be going to today's PTS patch, and we'll be running some basic tests throughout the day on Tuesday in Cyrodiil to ensure that we're able to make the above changes without requiring any maintenance or downtime. Once we launch update 27 for PC on August 24th, we will announce when one of the tests are beginning through an in-game announcement, and we'll have a form thread detailing which test is currently being performed. Remember, these tests will be limited to Cyrodiil, so AoE abilities in other PvP spaces will remain unchanged for now. Um, there's this also means PvE as well. I think we just missed that there. We will evaluate how these tests go and let everybody know next steps. So, obviously, these tests are very unpopular. Um, and the main reason for this is that the main draw of combat in ESO compared to other MMOs is the fact that we don't actually have cooldowns on a per ability basis. Yes, we have a global cooldown of one second between each ability, but that's pretty much it. So for a lot of other MMOs, uh, you have you know, timed cooldowns for each ability. So you would use an ability, let's say ability A, that ability A might have a five second cooldown. So you would have to wait five seconds before you can use ability A again. Um, so that is what makes MMOs like World of Warcraft different from ESO because ESO doesn't have that five second cooldown per ability. As long as you have the resources, you're able to cast that ability every second if you so desire. So obviously these tests that include the 3-second timer are really kind of goes uh, against basically the whole combat design of ESO that has been in place since the very beginning of the game, since essentially beta and the launch.
Now, the idea that have introducing a three-second timer will basically reduce the number of server calculations that need to be done, thus reducing the lag. This is a logical statement, and people who are more familiar with uh, computing have basically said that, yes, this is a solution, but it is definitely not the perfect solution here. Um, what we can also read between the lines here is that it doesn't seem like they are getting the resources to upgrade any sort of server hardware or potentially even software. Now, ESO is an old game. So for those of you guys who were around during the beta and during launch, you'll know that this game is going on six years old at this point. So server hardware back in 2014, 2015, even state of the art, if you want to think about what CPUs were around back then, I believe this was the time of the Haswell refresh on the Intel side of things. I believe Skylake came out uh, late 2015. So we're still talking about 14 nanometer process here. Uh, and if you think about what we're at, where we're at today with uh, Ryzen's Threadripper, for example, and Epic server uh, CPUs, they're on the seven nanometer process and they're already talk about going down to five nanometers in the near future. So obviously we're running on aged hardware. Um, obviously Threadripper now is far significantly um, stronger and more powerful than what server CPUs were capable of back five, six years ago. But it doesn't seem like from the, this announcement that they are getting the resources they need to replace that hardware, which Admittedly, when I talked to some, again, so some people who are more familiar with computer hardware and software, they admitted that even if they did upgrade to the top of the line server specs, that still might unnecessarily solve the issue of server calculation side, because there's only so much information that can be passed through. You know, when you, when you consider how quickly information can actually be passed, the physical limit is the speed of light. Obviously, we're not getting to that speed, so there is an actual physical limit to how quickly a computer is able to process information, and having upgraded hardware might not necessarily um, make it any faster for the computer to make those survey calculations. Now, personally, I don't PvP a lot, so I had to get a lot of information from other players uh, concerning PvP, mostly from the ESOU Discord uh, that Nephis uh, heads up here. And basically, everybody's pretty much has come to the same conclusion that these tests are going to be widely unpopular, and there is a very, very strong possibility that the results that they're getting from these tests might be flawed in some way because there might not be enough people who are, are incentivized to go to Cyrodiil and actually use these changes or, uh, or actually play in Cyrodiil. Yes, they are incentivizing us with double AP, but that might not necessarily be a good incentive for people who are already Grand Overlords, for example. Um, so, basically, the sense that I got from the PvP community is that while this is a solution to solving the lag issues in Cyrodiil, it is not a good solution, and it runs completely counter to what the ESO combat system has been designed around for the past four to five years. Now, the other concern here is the history that Zoss has with these tests. There have been only two instances where Zoss has responded to player feedback on proposed changes. Those two instances were cast times on shields and the proposed light and heavy attack changes. In both scenarios, there was an enormous player outcry against these changes, both from both the endgame PvE community, the PvP community, and casual players as well. So those are the only two instances where Zoss has actually backpedaled and say, hey, we're not going to be doing this. Um, so whether or not this these changes get the same level of feedback in terms of negative feedback remains to be seen. In addition, tests that have been placed on the live server, it makes it sound like they're basically more or less going to go along with one of these four tests as their solution. And while it doesn't explicitly state this, the fact that they say that if these tests confirm our hypothesis, which we know they will based on my conversations with people who are more in the know about server computing, uh, and these tests will confirm their hypothesis, it is very, very likely that they will actually go through with one of these tests and fundamentally change how Comet works in Cyrodiil. And I have heard a lot of people saying that if the changes go through, it's basically going to kill PvP in Cyrodiil. 
There's also the concern from the PvE players that these changes might bleed over to the PvE side of things because essentially this is the same thing that's happening on the PvE side of things uh, in terms of lag. You know, if you're casting all these AoE abilities in a trial instance, for example, you're going to eventually get lag if you're casting that many AoEs and the server has to make all those calculations. So all of these concerns combined are what's causing this very loud outcry against these performance tests here. The combination of these changes running counter to what ESO comm system has been about, the fact that reading between the lines, it seems like they're not getting anything to upgrade the server uh, hardware or software or whatever it is that they need to get it up to par with today's standards. The history of Zas's testing and the general lack of listening to player feedback, all of these things combined do make me very, very concerned with what they're doing with these changes. Um, and as much as clickbait as the title of this video is, I do truly believe that if they do go through with these tests and actually take these tests and make them, you know, in actuality, that they're essentially killing this game. PvP, I don't PvP a lot, but I know that many players enjoy PvP Cyrodiil. Um, and I know a lot of players play ESO purely for the PvP experience. If these changes go through, I do agree with what a lot of PvP players are saying in that this fundamentally changes how PvP works and runs completely counter to the ESO experience and will likely turn off a lot of people from ever set, setting foot into Cyrodiil ever again. So, yeah, a lot of things to unpack here. Um, but hopefully this video explains exactly what's going on and why there's so much um, discussion about these changes happening across the ESO discords and especially in the endgame PvP community as well. And I'm not much of a PvP player, so I don't, I can't really comment on a lot of the statements that were made, for example, the PvE, the AOE spamming and stuff like that. Um, but as a PvE, I should say, past PvE player, I w am concerned that they're going to take these results and possibly integrate them into PvE somehow and essentially kill PvE combat. And as much as I rag on ZOS and ESO in general, I don't want to see this game die. And these, what they're doing here is basically killing the game, um, both in terms of identity and as well as potentially player base as well. But that pretty much covers what I wanted to talk about in this video. If you guys would like to discuss this in the comment section, you're free to do so. Just please keep it civil. Um, and if you do want to give feedback to the devs, make sure to actually participate in the test when they start in August or whenever they happen to start and make sure to use slash feedback or whatever uh, feedback methods that they're going to provide for the players. And as always, there's a link in the description below to this forum topic and so if you have a forum account, please make your voices heard on the forum account, especially once the tests go live. Uh, based on what we've seen, they tend to take feedback that happens during actual testing and from the in-game client slash feedback more seriously uh, than they take stuff from the forums or Reddit or any of the discords. So please, if you feel very strongly against or for these changes, please... When they do the tests in August, make sure to log into Cyrodiil and submit a slash feedback report. But that is it for this video. Hope that you guys found this informative in some way. And I will see you guys in the next dungeon.